Good morning. Everybody awake? Um, we had a great day yesterday, at least I thought so. Um, one of the themes that you heard, and, and it, even though we tell people what our theme is, you never know whether it's going to get woven through the whole day. But I loved all the collaborative stories that we heard yesterday because I think that's so important to the success of this industry. So we're hoping that we're going to hear more of that again today. I wanted to take just a, a moment to thank our sponsors. First of all, our premier sponsor, Forbes. <laughs> Secondly, our industry partners, Comscore, Google, and Time, Inc. <laughs> of course, our partner in the Partner Awards, Media Link, which we gave out last night. and all the rest of the sponsors who make this possible, because without them, we couldn't pull this off. In a minute, I'm about to turn this over to uh, John Montgomery, who's going to be your MC for the morning. Um, but I did want to highlight that we have a, a very special keynote coming up, an interview between Bill Konigsberg and Tim Armstrong. And I just wanted to personally say I appreciate Tim being here, because he is one of the industry, industry's biggest cheerleaders, and he's also quite possibly one of the most agency-friendly media people there, there is. So hopefully you're going to find out the same thing when you hear him talk. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to John Montgomery, who is the head of our Media Leadership Council and who works tirelessly to represent the media part of this industry within the agency community. So John? Thanks, Nancy. We're dedicating today to media. We'll be addressing important related media topics with industry influencers, and Nancy's mentioned Tim, but also Dominic Proctor, Daryl Sim, Bob Leodis, Carolyn Everson, uh, Dave Morgan, Tara Walpert Levy, and many more distinguished speakers. But first, let me tell you a little bit about what's, be keep, what's been keeping us busy at the Media Leadership Council. It's been an exceptional year since I sort of stood in front of you in Los Angeles in 2014. Last year, I showed you a video of marketers talking about the importance of media to businesses. And I know that if I asked them again, they would say the same. Our discipline continues to grow in importance. And as data drives decisions and operations and marketing, it's likely to continue to grow in importance. In LA, I said that the media leadership of our industry had decided to focus on, on three issues. One, mobile and mobile agencies' mobile readiness. Two, addressable media, and in particularly programmatic. And three, measurement, and, and a, with a specific focus on cross-media measurement and how reach builds across offline and online media. We chose well. Those priorities are just as relevant today as they were then. And we've been busy with these three, and we'll report back on them in more detail today. You'll also see these themes woven into the agenda later on today. But what else has been on our minds and, and, and discussions in the boardrooms on the Media Leadership Council? Here are some of the things that are, are evergreen in, in our discussions. And let me, let me go into detail on, 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 on a few of these. Firstly, and I think this needs to be said, Although a deluge of shiny new digital innovations tempt us, te uh, tempt us we're, we're reminded of TV as a, as a real powerhouse. It may not be trendy and the subject of every single conference, but it's still a $370 billion earning machine in ad and subscription revenue, with audi audiences dedicating an average of more than 3.8 hours a day to watching TV. It's still the brand marketer's medium of choice, no other medium builds reach like TV, and marketers feel that the impact and the quality of big screen audiovisual audio visual visibility is great. They have confidence in the results, built, over, built up over more than 60 years worth of research. I think most marketers have a pretty good idea of what happens when every incremental dollar is spent on television. And they have trust in a system that's been perfected over many years. Marketers also find that TV drives volume because it scales like no other medium. Video consumption, although it's very exciting, and we'll talk about it later, and it's growing, it still pales in, in, into, into comparison with TV. And yes, TV is changing, and it'll face huge disruption. I'm sure you've read with interest uh, that Apple are launching their own uh, um, television network in June. 
uh, with a new Apple box, with, a, with, with, a, with the App Store on the Apple box. Um, but TV is likely to remain a very, very powerful force in US media. And of course, my colleagues in TV remind me with a wry smile that 100% of television is viewable. <laughs> Speaking of which, we've been working on issues related to trust in the supply chain for a number of years. But this year brought a number of them together in a sort of a crescendo led by the Ugly Sisters' viewability and fraud. Now, this has been a confusing time for the industry, and particularly for marketers. There's been so much noise about these issues, mostly negative, mostly led by misinformation, self-interest, and apocryphal. And we've all seen the widely divergent claims on both fraud and on viewability. And viewability in particular has been in the news recently, and once again, most of it negative and most of it conflicting. And in the midst of this, you may have missed the good news. Teams from the four A's, the ANA and the IAB have been working together on an initiative called 3MS, Making Measurement Make Sense. And the first step was setting a viewability guideline so we could get a, a consistent view of what an impression is. And these guidelines were launched exactly a year ago. And whilst the implementation has been controversial, the actual results of the initiative have been pretty spectacular. Ads are much more viewable than they were last quarter and they are much, much more viewable than they were a year ago when the advisory was lifted. Our group, Group M, is showing an average viewability lift of more than a third since we started. Publishers have responded by redesigning their sites to make advertising more viewable, and marketers are paying higher prices for better quality video impressions. This is what we set out to do, and we're by no means done yet. Um, but this is very good news, and we sh we sh it shouldn't be buried in, in, uh, in all of the confusing and bad press. Fraud and piracy, too, has been addressed with great priority. The industry has heard the urgency in the voice of clients and media buyers, and, and they're saying this is something that will no longer be tolerated or paid for. You'll hear more about this on our, our tag session uh, later in the afternoon. Please make sure you catch that. You can always see how a new development is trending by the number of conferences it generates. And based on the near weekly conference frequency of programmatic, this is hands down the hottest issue of the year. When marketing titans like P&G and American Express announced that they aim to buy 75% of their digital media programmatically by the end of 2014, um, it became impossible not to take notice. This is a step change from which there's no going back. It disrupts digital marketing in almost every way. There's not a single agency, publisher, or marketer that's not discussing their programmatic strategy at the moment. Questions like, should it be in-house? No, of course not. Do we really need real-time buying? How do we manage the data? Where do we find the people? And although Marissa uh, said last year um, that programmatic is the opposite of manual, it's not as simple as that. Programmatic done well is every bit as labor intensive as reserved buying. It's just that the skill set and the effort are placed elsewhere. We're still in the early stages of programmatic where it's, it, it's difficult to define exactly where it, what it is. But two key attributes um, that char characterize programmatic uh, that everybody agrees on are firstly automation. It allows us to scale digital, which is desperately needed, and data. Data is critical for feeding effective programmatic buying. And those two make up programmatic and are driving us forward. The good news for agencies is that those of us who are embrace, in, embracing this change, it helps us be indispensable to our clients because no one is better placed to add value across the fragmented media spectrum than a media agency. And programmatic, to be sure, will be a big disruptor. We have to accelerate our understanding of technology and data and strengthen our skill sets within with data scientists and organize our agencies more around real-time, always-on communication. So there's a real challenge there. And Dave Morgan is leading a compelling debate about this later today. And I say debate, not panel, panel discussion. You'll see it'll be lively. Another one of the issues that we're discussing, and deservedly so, is talent. It's a, it's a perennial topic in our business. But changes in our industry are making these discussions more urgent because we not only need to feed our industry with good, motivated talent, we've now added to the difficulty by having to find a new kind of talent. Challenges like diversity, mobility, agility, retention, and training are very much still with us. But where we, where we were once seeking communication graduates with an analytics aptitude, and normally the, the test for that was, do you know Excel? And then there was a check off. Now we're looking for maths grads 
who can present to clients? Where do we find them? Are the universities keeping up with the appropriate curricula? And how do we compete with the sexier, certainly for now, tech companies? And it's not just talent in the data science area. In our multi-fragmented world, project management, partnerships, and activation have become much more complex than they once were. And these are new skill sets upon which we were less reliant in the past. And no, because I get asked this all the time, programmatic buying will not replace people. However, it will require a new talent, and it will engage that talent um, across areas like optimization and, and insights instead of administration. Uh, Chris, Chris Weil mentioned yesterday about the initiative to get new talent and work with schools in, in some of the urban areas to get new talent into our agencies and hopefully funnel a thousand new people into our, into our business. This is really what we need over the next, uh, over the next few years, and I, I think it sounds like it's well worth supporting. And lastly, video. Uh, yes, video and TV are converging, but pre-roll is only video's most basic use. Video may be leapfrogging desktop to go straight into mobile. Already 65% of Facebook video views are on mobile devices. And video production's been democratized. Short form micro video, which is ideal for mobile, is seeing massive growth. There are 80,000 vines uploaded daily with a consequent 50 billion loops. Um, and <clears throat> brands need to understand what keywords drive uh, the, the, the viewership in micro video. And brands, too, are huge creators of content, too. There are now no less than 18,000 brands on YouTube. And fan engagements in mashups of those brands is spectacular. A tech brand created 4,000 original videos, which created an impressive 400,000 views. But the fans took that and created 100,000 unique videos with a consequent 1.7 billion views. The video is also highly effective for exploring niches. Uh, a, a mobile tech brand had a 26, 27x engagement and a 6x uh, viewership increase on Marcus Brownlee's tech channel more than they had on their own channel. And in many channels, including Facebook, you pay for the story, not the duration. You bid for the unit. So if your story takes 15 seconds or two minutes to tell, you pay the same. And that's great news for engagement and it's great news for creative directors. Also, 90% of mobile completed video views are completed with the sound off. How are we thinking about things like that in our video and creative strategy? Make sure you catch Jack's session on video later on this morning. I think that some of more of these will be described. So TV, trust in the supply chain, talent, programmatic, and video, some of the subjects that are being discussed in media boardrooms at the moment. You'll also hear more about the, some of these later today. But expect a formal update on each of our three focus areas specifically so that you can see what progress has been made in mobile, addressable, and cross-media measurement. So much is going on in media at the moment. Thank you.